All right, lads, Robbie again from Kickback Garage. Now, today's little video soiree, we will be uh, delving into the cob, and I'm gonna show you how to uh, put that together. I've taken it apart, ready for um, rejetting, and I've got a little issue here I want to talk to you about. So, grab yourself a cup of coffee, and I'll send the scooter over. Woo! Right lads, over the past couple of videos I've got lots of comments about uh, the wing nut here and uh, I've been trying to explain uh, why I put the wing nut there but I'm going to explain it here on film once and for all. Now the reason why I put this, okay let me just take this out first. I'm just going to ease this filter out there on the elbow. Right well, this is what it looks like. Now. The tie, the tie rod that holds this together is held in on the early uh, Series 3s, apparently, I'm not 100% sure, but this is what came with the scooter. Um, this tie rod is obviously supposed to go in the opposite way, but because uh, I'm not too keen on just having a simple wing nut on the inside of the uh, airbox, that can <laughs> simply just uh, rattle off uh, in due time. What I've done is I bought myself the later type uh, rod, which comes with a nylock knot, and this uh, little kit I got from uh, Scootopia. So the reason why I put the uh, wing nut on the outside is simply to remind myself that I need to uh, swap that around. So it's such a glaring uh, problem there that uh, I wouldn't forget it because I've got lots of little jobs here and it's easily done uh, forgetting something simple like this. So I'll, uh, I'll fix this now and then uh, we'll go over to the uh, cob. I'm not sure you can see this but I'm going to talk anyway as I do. As you see, uh, one side of the uh, rod has got like a half moon disc thing going on there and that's basically so that it sits snug and secure on the outside there. And on the inside we have uh, this uh, little plate here that fits on the back side of this um, filter and I've got like this felt, oh, what's it called, like some sort of uh, fiber washer and we have the nylock nut which shouldn't bounce off anytime soon so that's what i was worried about that if i just fit it with the uh with the wing nut that i, I got with the uh kit or with the scooter sorry then that would just fall out and rattle around inside the airbox which is something i wanted to avoid now it's easily done you could probably compress this air filter completely if you wanted to but what I'm trying to do here is just get the uh, the end of the nylock on the nut there just to sit flesh with the uh, with the long bolt which just seems to be taking forever there we go so that should sit fine and we'll just whip that back in again and hopefully I won't hear anything more about it. <laughs> I do like the attention, but sometimes it can be a bit too much. Aren't they? They're quite hefty to get on these springs. Ah, there we go. Ah, there we go. Right, are you happy now, are we? Job done. Right, so this is the jet in that I'm going to be starting off with on the TV 175 build, which is, of course, the RT195 uh, kit. Now, this cob kit was uh, bought from uh, MB Scooters as a pre jetted carb. And I just wanted to make sure and have a look what was in there, uh, what they uh, suggest. And the uh, what's it called? The uh, float needle 
was a little bit too small for my taste. And I, I phoned them up, MB Scooters there, nice lads, and they suggested that they buy these pre-jetted from, the, uh, from the supplier. And it looked like that they hadn't changed the uh, float jet. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to put it together. So what we're going to start off with here is 102 main. I've also got a 100 and I think a 98 that came with the kit. The atomizer is, uh, what's that? AP 264. Or is it an AD? I can't even read my own writing, but you get the gist. The pilot is a 50, the chalk is a 60. The needle is uh, either a D26 or a 026, I'm not quite sure, my eyes are failing. Uh, the slide is a 40, and uh, apparently that is a good setup for uh, the RT195 breathing through the air box. So let's go have a look at the carb. Right lads, well this is the semi-strip carb, uh, the PHBL25 that I'll be using on the TV175 rebuild. This is a brand new carb, as I said, came as a kid from MB Scooters. Nice chaps. Now, uh, one thing that I noticed is uh, in here you've got the float jet, and these tend to come from the factory uh, very, very small. So if you're um, fitting these to a tune scooter, and this also applies to the PHPH both 28 and 30 carbs then you should really have a, a larger floatboard jet because what tends to happen with the small jets that these come with is uh, at full whack down the motorway uh, you're using more fuel than the carb lets into the floatboard and you get uh, fuel starvation which is no good to us whatsoever so I'm not sure if my theory is right here, but I reckon you could probably go for the biggest one that will fit in there almost, because the needle will stop the uh, flow of fuel anyway. But uh, I tend to fit, on this one I bought a 250, and on the RT225 that I've run in, and uh, other scooters, uh, I think I fit a 300 on there. So just to ensure that you don't run out of fuel when you need it, now, let's have a look, can I find, here we go. Right, so this is the new uh, float jet that I'm going to be fitting, and I'll show you how to fit that. But, before we start on, uh, on this uh, card here, do yourselves a favour, if you're uh, using a PHBL or a PHBH, run along to a Scooter Factory here on YouTube, and the blog there is Dan, who uh, runs Scootering Magazine, and he's got two or three videos, I think, that are re of really, really good uh, information on this type of carb in particular, which is also turned out to be my uh, go-to favorite carb as well, because they're pretty easy to work on and uh, they're uh, nice and reliable. So this jet here, this is your pilot jet, and as I suggested earlier I have fit a 50 on there. Down in the bottom here in the uh, needle tube this is your atomizer and this is where I will be fitting the float uh, ball needle. So let's uh, fit that. Now uh, one thing to watch here is uh, you've got a little what's it called like a um, a fiber washer in the bottom there to seal it up just if you take out sometimes if you take out these jets then that could come with it and in my case it's just sat at the top there and this is a brand new carb so I won't bother uh, changing that it just means that I've got a new one here in case I get a leaky in a future date so let's have a look at this fancy spancy And it comes, it comes with the, the fiber washer there. I can save that for a later date. And this is your needle. So what happens is, let me take off this sticker. So the basics of the game here is, this sits inside the carb. 
and this sits on top of the float this spring-loaded tap there and this is what seals up the hole in the top so when the float when the float bow fills up the floats themselves which are these uh, plastic gummings here when these when these move up they push up this uh, little needle and they block off the hole it's simple as another one to watch is if you've got an older cob make sure that you've got the red tip on the top here because uh, the red tip is ethanol resistant and the older types had the black tip and they could uh, they could erode uh, with ethanol so that you get cob flooding so if you've got problems with cob flooding look at the float needle first right let's put this in as suggested this baby threads into here Like so. Just snug it down there. Then take your... What am I missing here, really? I'm not missing anything. <laughs> it would be typical putting this together and I'd have to pull it apart again. So that spring-loading bit on the float needle that fits hooks in a hook here if I can get it in there behind the camera come on you little bugger there we go like so ah oh, lovely not quite like so we'll put that there slide it over here there you go fits in there nice one And then somewhere here in my magic box, I have this, which is the pin. This is what holds the float into place. and get it in the hole there just give it a little tap just to see it up. you've got some serrations there so it sort of sticks itself in there so as you can see here when the float ball if I turn it around you can have a look Petrol comes in here through the banjo down this uh, float needle hole here and as the uh, petrol enters the float ball this pushes up onto the needle and seals the hole easy peasy so that's that one done and then I want to fit this one I've seen people that leave these out, uh, they are there for a purpose, I'm not sure if it would make any difference on a small scooter, but these apparently they are to prevent throffing of the petrol. So that fits there, and then we have the float ball itself. There you go clicks on it's got a rubber gasket round there and on this which holds the uh, float ball into place here is where you fit your main jet this one as uh, you can see on the blackboard there is 102 so I'm just gonna fit this in the end here And 
just snug it down. Secures the float ball. Like so. That's it. Then I will be fitting the intake hose here, the banjo, this is a filter by the way, like this, where is the bolt, Obviously not that one. I'm just going to tighten this down by hand for now because uh, I want to reposition that so I get the best possible angle when I've got it in the scooter. So that's movable obviously. I normally have it facing down I think. And there you go. Just a case of fitting the choke which is uh, in the scooter I showed you that on the last one and then we have the where are you slide and the needle and I'll uh, fit this all back in the scooter right lads there you go, I have uh, fit the carburetor once again. Uh, some small problems, uh, there's sort of an extra air intake on the manifold there. So when I tightened it all down, um, I noticed that the carb was interfering with that. So I, uh, I modified it with a hammer, <laughs> a rubber hammer, uh, so that it could get the carb in. And that could also maybe, maybe explain why uh, it was sucking in false air somewhere, uh, could it explain in the uh, high revs that I had when I started it uh, last time. So yeah, fingers crossed that that's okay. Uh, as you see, I have cut the throttle cable, so that goes nicely in there, and I've used the elbow instead of the, the straight uh, what's -a jig that I did last time. Uh, and you can, as you can see as well, is this this is quite an acute angle now that I've got the carb properly on the manifold rubber. But it was a lot, lot easier to fit this time compared to last time because I did the old uh, put it in boiling water trick and it made it really, really supple. These are quite stiff, but after I'd have, had them in uh, boiling water, they were it was really, really supple. So it just went on very very easily actually to tell you the truth so that is that is a good thing that's a plus uh another thing i want to say before as you can see obviously i fit the the flywheel cover as well there looking lovely uh, a little bit tricky uh with this spacer that we've got because we're running a um long stroke uh, crankshaft but i had to sort of tuck it and bend it and tuck it in under there so that looks okay one thing that worries me a little bit, and we'll we'll see that when um, when it's running, is the fact that this uh, airbox elbow isn't like the original one. It hasn't got a drain pipe. Like normally it would be sitting here, and you'd have the drain pipe that hooks on the end there. So if you're uh, unlucky and flood the carb, or you get excess um, fuel in the elbow here, yeah? then it had just drain out uh, the bottom there, but this hasn't got one, which is, uh, yeah, 
So we'll see how that goes. Uh, fingers crossed that that'll be fine. And then really sort of, I can uh, fire her up again. But the problem is the leg shields, they are still loose. Luckily, I've got the screws for those. And I think that's what I'm going to do in next video. I'm going to fit the leg shields, uh, mug guard, home cast. Yeah, so we'll do that. And it's not long until uh, I can actually get this out on the road and give it a bit of a test ride, hopefully. <laughs> now I know some of the lights weren't working when we started up last time as well, so that's something I'm gonna do after do a bit of a troubleshoot on it. But uh, I'm not working quite as much as I have been the last uh, three weeks. So hopefully uh, I can use a couple of, uh, couple of evenings here and uh, get this sorted. I really, really, really want to do it before the end of July. That's sort of my goal. Uh, one last thing before I love you and leave you. Now, I complained about this uh, Scootopia fuel tap. One little feature that they've got in there that I've noticed now when I, when I plugged it all in is the fact that um, it actually stops on reserve with a little click. Let's see if we can hear that. Ooh, so that's your reserve and then no sorry that's open and then you've got reserve pointing down there you go so it sort of clicks into place there which is pretty cool i'm not sure if uh the original original ones did that but uh yeah that's actually a nice little touch hopefully they'll sort the issue out with the the nut on that thing and uh probably be a good uh fill tap there you go I quite like that actually and as you see I've shortened that in so that it's uh, yeah about five millimeters away from the rubber in the frame so I'll love you and leave you I hope you enjoyed this oh did I mention <laughs> oh that's so annoying it's so frustrating those uh, those are really really hard to get on these uh, spring clips and I managed to scratch the paint here and this I have no idea how I managed to do so when I put the rod through uh, I managed to uh, damage the paint on the end there, which is very annoying. But luckily, this is just on the elbow here. So if uh, if he's a bit pedantic, the owner, we can uh, touch that one up a little bit. But I'm pretty sure that as soon as you want to put this back on again, you're going to get those scratches there. Anyway, like I said, I love you and leave you. And I'll uh, see you in the next video. Do the old uh, subscribe and give me a thumbs up comments down below as they say and uh, grab yourself a t-shirt that's uh, the way that i fund this channel i'm uh, starting to build up a small little parts <laughs> small little parts uh, department there because uh, hopefully i can uh, do quite a bit of testing again this uh, this winter or as soon as i finish with this really and uh, yeah like i said love you leave you <laughs> see you in the next one lads ta -ra!